Good morning. How you doing today? Hope everything is going well. This is uh, Pastor David Max, and you know we are from the Table Church, Miami. Pastor David probably is going to be jumping in uh, very quickly, and today we have a very powerful message about discipleship and leadership. Um, <clears throat> Please feel free to comment and to let us know that everything is um, it's okay and you can hear and and you can watch me. That would be amazing. Let's take a look at what we have here today. Super excited. So the main topic today is called the power of discipleship. As you know, discipleship have uh, a lot of power. And basically, um, through this type of process of leadership, we can actually transform not only our lives, but the lives of the members of our family, our workplace, society, and eventually the nation, and build a strong, inspirational, and lasting legacy. As we all know, one of the most important goals of a good life is to build a patrimony and a legacy. Legacy spiritually, patrimony meaning improving things materially for the next generation as well. So basically, um, I'm gonna start with a personal anecdote. Many years ago, more than 10 years ago, I was going through one of my most difficult periods of my life. I was having marital problems in my first marriage. I was financially broke, but somehow I managed to continue to work in my first accounting business. It was, uh, you know, I decided to go on my own and I was launching my first accounting business. Then the economy hit me hard and I was financially broke and having problems and marital problems, um, you know, in no less degree uh, related to financial issues. And I was having lunch at a local restaurant in Doral, which, uh, you know, the place where I had my office in the past 15 years and a waiter approached me and he asked me, what do you do for a living? He's, you know, he saw that I was dressed in a, in a suit with a tie, which is proper attire for the professional business. And he wanted to know what I did for a living. I answered, I'm a certified public accountant. I prepare taxes, financial statements, and give financial advice. And he asked me, do you own your business? And I said, well, you could say so. Do you think that's a great career? That he was looking for career advice. And I said, I think that we could make out of anything a great career as long as it, this is something that you're passionate about, talented. You see an opportunity, demand in the market for this type of service or product and people willing to pay. And if you can find that, that basically you have a career, you have a business. Um, and basically I asked him, what is the career dream that you have right now? And he answered, I am working right now in this restaurant. The pay is okay, but someday I would like to have my own restaurant. And I said, well, success comes from a combination of education, hard work experience, and going, um, you know, and, and basically getting wisdom, getting better as we go. And I, and I told him, I recommend for you to study hospitality, including restaurant management, and learning the different aspects before launching your own restaurant because that would allow you to be more prepared. And, you know, he said, thank you for your advice. I shall never forget it. Okay. And we're going to see a little bit later on what happened with this story. But today we're here to discuss the power of discipleship, you know, taking that opportunity to teach someone else, mentor and do the right things. Um, so, so basically, these activities don't take only place in a church environment. They can be in your home. It can be in a, in a informal meeting. It can be in the workplace. It can be through training. And it relates to all the activities that we establish, um, you know, between a mentor and a mentee, a father and a son, mother and daughter, and also the father with the daughter, the mother with the son. Any opportunity that we have to develop a leadership relationship that is based on a leader teaching or providing mentorship to a follower. I would love to use always Bible examples and when I talk about the Bible I always like to start with Timothy 3 16 17 that says the scripture is God breathed so it is useful to teach and rebuking correcting 
and training in righteousness so that the servant of God can be ready for every good work. The Bible is a great blessing. It's a gift. It's also the word of God. And if we follow, it's it's like a great guide, uh, you know, like a manual that we can follow to transform our life from a regular human life to the spiritual life and all the things that we can achieve when we build ourselves to be great leaders in Christ. We cannot talk about discipleship in the Bible if we don't mention the story of Elijah and El Elisha. And basically we go to 1 Kings 19, 15, 20, and we're going to see how this develops into the famous double portion of leadership and discipleship. The Lord said to Elijah, Go back the way you came and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Hazael, king over Aram, and also anoint Jehu, son of Minchi, king over Israel, and also anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, from Abel Meholab, okay, as a prophet. So Elijah went from there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat, he was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen, and he himself was driving the twelfth pair. Elijah went up to him and threw his cloak around him. Elijah then left his oxen and ran after Elijah. Let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, he said, and then I will come to you. Go back, Elijah replied. What have I done to you? So Elijah left him and went back. He took his yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. He burned the plowing equipment and basically cooked the meat and gave it to the people, and they ate. And then he set out to follow Elijah, and he became his attendant. My commentary to this is, number one, the command was very specific, coming directly from God. Number two, it was not up to Elijah to decide who to anoint, but it was up to God. Number three, three different leaders would be raised at this moment, to a higher station. Elijah had no clue, no say about what was so special about Elisha and why God was anointing him. He was obedient, okay, and did as he was commanded. In the moment of truth, he felt bad about Elijah leaving his whole life behind. We need to watch out about our attitude, especially when we are mentoring or anointing. Sometimes the flesh is telling us that we've been abusive or we've been too strong. But God has a purpose. Elijah did not think twice about burning his chip, you know, and giving his new career destiny calling a full chance. He thought first of blessing others with his possessions, and he made a sacrifice, making the best before leaving. He call, uh, he coldly said goodbye, did not look back, never questioned God's will, and went in the pursuit of his calling. Here we see in action the dynamics of one of the best disciples, discipleships, relationships, collaborations in the Bible. This respect for authority, obedience, sacrifice, discipline, unity of purpose. We shall see how it gets rewarded with a double portion. There are, these are the qualities, character that are in our, uh, ingrained into the Holy Spirit, habits and customs which great life, family, society are built from. You know, this sacrifice that you have to actually do what is right and know what is convenient, um, you know, having the discipline, not taking shortcuts and actually undergoing your transformation through discipleship and following leaders is something that we have to continue to ingrain in our families, in our youth, in the next generations, the people around us in the workplace. If we are to actually change a little bit the times that we're living in, our job as leader is to create the environment, the culture, opportunity, discipleship, where future leaders can be developed. Very important. And yesterday I was reading the biography of Steve Jobs, um, you know, the famous founder of Apple. His father, though he was never a college student and graduated from college, was an avid mechanic who actually tinkered with old cars, fixing them and reselling them. And he would bring Steve Jobs to, you know, basically with him the most that he could. 
and throughout the process teaching him about the mechanics, the basic electronic, how to sell stuff so he became a good salesman, practical skills and also his mother was a bookkeeper so he learned a little bit of the record keeping um, and basically they learned the adopted uh, you know parents the adoptive parents they learned early on that he was very clever very bright and a special kid and they looked for the right type of schools to advance his intellect and development and basically they only placed checks and controls to make sure that he was not so stubborn but they never broke his spirit they allow him to be very independent and basically um, you know that's our job as leaders as fathers as supervisors managers to actually make sure that we nourish um, you know with our advice and we create the right environment for people to thrive okay and basically we will see how they develop their greatness and what they're good at, okay? We don't have the power to actually pick and choose who we're going to bless and who are we to anoint, okay? God is the one, the Holy Spirit, who will guide us and let us know when somebody's ready to be raised, uh, you know, risen to a, a higher station. And these are moments that we simply have to do what is right at the right moment even though we may have reservations, hesitations, but we have to do what is good. And that leads us to the Great Commission. The Great Commission, it's in Matthew 28, 16, 20, in which we will see how Jesus delegates authority to the disciples. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee in the mountain where Jesus had told them to go, and they saw him and worshiped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And what are we to discern from these verses of the Bible? One, the disciples went in obedience to the mountain as Jesus has commanded. Some of them doubted, meaning, as I said before, that they had reservations and, and were hesitant, but still they went there. Jesus claimed his authority on both on heaven and earth, and he delegated through, you know, his authority, the mission for all of us to make disciples. He specially instructed us to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and He confirmed His presence with us until the end of the age. So, you know, this is one of the most important commandments of the Bible. You know, we always try, like to talk about the, the Ten Commandments and how God at the beginning in the Old Testament gave us a bunch of commandments, and we, we have made them into laws uh, of different sorts and, and try to basically evaluate and judge people according to that. But many of us, we have not embraced, even though we call ourselves Christians, this commandment, this commission from Jesus to actually go into the world and develop disciples. We cannot be sitting on the fence and seeing how things go into despair, how, you know, our kids do the wrong things, how in the workplace there are a lot of people that are orphaned and they need our help and we decide not to get into the fray because it's a lot of trouble. In fact, this is a commission, a commandment from Jesus to go out there and help other people, you know. And basically, I believe that we have deviated much from our mission and calling to make disciples of all nations and taking every opportunity that we have to baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Second, I also believe that we have taken for granted our roles as parents, teachers, role models, examples of authority that we see in ourselves time and time again, and we have relinquished our naturally given authority and power in order to be number one. These are the enemies of a good discipleship. Number one, trying to be politically correct. You can never please everybody. Number two, being socially popular. There's nothing more vain than trying to be in the long term socially popular because it doesn't allow you to actually set a good example. Widely accepted, that's, a, that's basically like Solomon says, chasing after the wind. You won't be accepted by everybody. 
Never to be questioned. I mean, a lot of people are going to question you and you have to be strong in your faith and your belief system. We are made to believe that we need to fit into an average mold. I mean, if everybody's average and we actually don't take the time to develop outstanding and great people, then what we have is mediocrity. So trying to fit into the average mold when God has given us a special talents and gifts is not the way to go. This has caused a degenerative process in which our lives seem to be average, number one. Number two, our families have turned into being more dysfunctional. A society is lacking in family values. We have a government that is very corrupt, inefficient, and bureaucratic at its best. It doesn't really work properly. Our children are shy, socially inadequate, and dependent on electronics because we don't actually, you know, like to get and forge them into character that it's, it looks like a steel, you know, into a strong character. And they, they turn to electronics and everything because we don't really spend time with them doing what we need to do. Real leaders are basically a species in extinction in themselves. And we have a bunch of fake superficial role models that appear to be real and they look like successful leaders. So somebody opens a, a company and they make a lot of money or they open an, an internet company and all this stuff and they're very good at something but they don't really have the qualities of what is called to be a leader. And all of a sudden because they look good or they have money or they have power, all of a sudden they became the role model for society. And there are a bunch of people that are geeks and all that, but they're not great leaders. And then you have a lot of people that are geeks, that are very smart, that are great leaders. And just because they're not popular, we don't tend to follow them. And that's a big problem. We need to actually teach our children, the people around us, the people in our family, to actually have, uh, you know, a good discernment, okay? And being able to discern when you are in the presence of somebody that is a good role model and example. So even though we, it may look like we're living in the fact we're living in apocalyptic times, I think that you and I, you know, and all of us here have the opportunity to take notice action and build eventually a new generation of leaders that are, they have a lot of purpose, that are effective, inspiring and knowledgeable. Disciples that will develop a better individual family society and a brand new nation, okay? that is going to be able to do a lot of great things in our times. We at the Table Church Miami believe that we are here following our calling and to begin our conversation and many more conversations that will turn into the action that would actually teach into righteousness what is needed to turn the tide of apathy and a process of rebirth of a new community, a system that is able to develop leaders right here in Miami and other places. We wouldn't like to, um, you know, close this message without giving you the opportunity to one, accept God as your father and provider. Second, you know, accept Jesus as the Lord of your life. And number three, accept the Holy Spirit as your, as your mentor and guide all the days of your life. If you believe these are truth that are true, you are about to begin and continue to transform into a person that God made you to be and created you to be. Uh, please tune here and every Sunday at 10 a.m. in English and every other Sunday at 11 a.m. so you can get some Bible nourishment and the power to change your life and also, you know, change your life into the best life possible. And I wanted to close a little bit different today. You know what happened? years later after I had that conversation with that kid that was a waiter my new wife this was many years later we were sitting in a restaurant and we have somebody approach us you know I didn't recognize him but he came close to me and said do you remember me and I said no I don't remember you he was well remember once that I was in a restaurant I was a waiter and I asked you about career choices and you recommended for me to study hospitality and I said, yes, I do remember now. He said, well, I just graduated, you know, from Florida International University with a degree in hospitality. And I specialize in restaurant management, like you said. And I'm about to launch my own restaurant. So I'm very grateful to you. And 
Um, I would like to take this opportunity to show my gratitude by not charging you. Today, you don't have to pay for your meal with your wife. I want to be the one, you know, to, to invite you. You don't have to, you don't have to pay it because what you did for me that day that I was making career choices and you actually stepped out of your, you know, regular routine to have a conversation with me. It really inspired me. It was, uh, very enlightening and I was able to get the advice that I needed and I'm gonna launch my restaurant and I'm always gonna be indebted to you for this and I'm very thankful. And what I never told him is that I was going through one of the worst periods of my life and yet I found the strength to actually do what I needed to do. And we always have the power to change someone's life. If regardless of how we feel, whether we have reservations, we're hesitant or we're not feeling very good, we have all of us the power to change someone's life. So please change somebody else's life today by being a good mentor and taking your position and the command, the commission that Jesus gave to us to develop disciples and to actually care for the people and take them to the next level. God bless you. Next week we will, uh, in a couple of weeks, I'm gonna be, uh, next week Pastor David will continue his line um, of you know teachings about many things that are very important in the Bible in our lives and two weeks from now I'm going to continue with discipleship number two and that you know it's very interesting we keep it very cool because you get to see different um, views uh, about you know the same thing which is a great thing which is the Bible and we are using this combination one two to make sure that you from different angles you get the nourishment that you need to change and transform your life God bless you. Thank you for being here with us today. Bye-bye.